So these are the notes for uh, 2.6. And uh, 2.6 is all about how do we combine different functions. Uh, some of them are going to be addition and subtraction. Other ones will be uh, multiplying and other ones will be dividing. And then we have this really cool thing called composition where we put one function inside of another function. It allows us to do multiple math problems all at the same time, which is a great application uh, for real world problems. Um, and, you know, <coughs> when we say that we want to add two functions, we're going to add the two functions. Don't complicate that. Subtract them. Make sure that you distribute the negative into the second function, however many times it takes to finish the problem. And then, of course, we have product. And then quotient just means to pr produce the division. Um, <clears throat> and so the idea is we want to create a new function, f times g, which we just take function f times function g. And we're going to look at that in these examples we'll look at today. First, we want to find f plus g of x. Essentially, we want f and g to be added to create a new equation. And so we're going to take function f of x we're going to add function g of x. Well, function f of x is listed right here. 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. And we want to add our second function, which is 2x plus 7. So you can kind of see there's function f, there's function g. We are adding the equations, not multiplying, dividing, or subtracting, just adding. So we're going to combine our like terms. So f plus g of x will equal 3x squared plus 6x, that's 4x and 2x. A minus 1 and a plus 7 is plus 6. This is our new function. We've added the 2 and created a new equation. I know that 3x squared plus 6x plus 6 is sort of the focus, but now what we're able to do is we're able to plug in different values for x into this equation and find out the result. And so I'm going to take and just plug 4 in for x. Instead of using an x, I'll use 4. So 3 times 4 squared plus 6 times 4 plus 6. Now 4 squared is 16, and 3 times that is 48, plus 24 plus 6. These two make 30. 30 plus 48 is 78. You might not think that's that special. We just plugged in a number and, and got an answer. But what's really neat is if I go back to the original, let's say I take 3x squared, but I'm going to use my 4. 3 times 4 squared plus 4 times 4 minus 1. So this would be f of 4. This is not part of the question, but I, I just want to point out something really cool that's happening in the background. And then g of 4 okay, is 2 times 4 plus 7. If I add this, this is 16 times 3 is 48 again, plus 16 minus 1. 48 and 16 is 64, minus 1 is 63. Over here I get 8 plus 7 is 15. If I were to add the result of f of 4 and g of 4, I would get 78. The same as if I had added the equations beforehand and then did the substitution. So instead of doing this question and this question and then adding the results, I just add them and then I can do as many substitutions as I want. What if I needed 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 all plugged in? It would be way quicker to create the new equation and do the substitutions there rather than substitute here and here and then go back and do that um, addition each time. The next type of problem is multiplication and then division. So here I have the equation f times g of x, meaning I want to take f of x, I want to times it by g of x. That would be 2x minus 1, and I want to multiply it by x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, And so as I go through and do this, it's just a FOIL question. I'm going to get 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x and then I get minus x squared, minus x, and plus 2. If I combine all my like terms, I get 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 2. 
and we're good. Pretty straightforward, just multiply them and you're good. That would be our new equation. When we do division, one thing we have to be careful about, we always make sure that the denominator is not zero. But this is pretty straightforward. I want to put f of x over g of x. That's all I need to do. f of x is 2x minus 1. I'm going to put that over x squared plus x minus 2. Now you do always want to make sure that these don't simplify and divide, so I'm going to rewrite the denominator. 2x minus 1 over, and I want to factor it because it's an x squared, if I can. So x and x, the 2 would have to be a 2 and a 1. And in order for, it's going to be negative and a positive. To get a positive 1, I'd go plus 2 minus 1. Now, the denominator does not cancel the numerator. But I can say that x cannot equal negative 2 or positive 1. If that's the case, I get 0 in the denominator and I have a problem. So that answer, when you're doing division, you have to include values that are restrictions or, or not allowed to be part of your solution. All right, well, there's your division. The last thing that we're really focused on is what we call composition. Composition of a function is when we put one function inside of another function. And for that, uh, for that we'll use this O symbol oftentimes. This means to compose. It always says which function this function right here is what we call the, the parent function or the function that's the, the structure. Okay, We get our structure here. This is what goes inside. I'm going to put this inside the other equation. And you can kind of see that here in the other version of composition function. We'll say put g of x inside of f of x. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at f of x first. It says 3 times x plus 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 3, and instead of writing x, I'll leave some parentheses plus 4. I don't want x to go in this parentheses. I want g of x, which is the other equation, to go in there. So I'm going to drop x squared plus 6 in. And then it's just basic simplifying. If you distribute 3x squared plus 16, or plus 18, sorry, plus 4. The whole equation, the composition that is, becomes 3x squared uh, plus 22. Now, it's not always the same if you go in reverse. In fact, oftentimes it's different. Uh, most of the time it's different. So here, I'm going to take the outer function, which is g, and I'm going to build its equation, its structure. Its structure is to have something squared plus 6. So I'm going to do parentheses where the x is, something squared plus 6. But instead of putting x in here, I want to put the other function. So down here, I'm going to drop in a 3x plus 4. Now whenever we have a parentheses and it's squared, we have to be careful. My guess is we probably ought to consider uh, foiling that 3x plus 4. So 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. And of course, we have our plus 6 out here. We're going to get 9x squared. We'll get 12x, but then we'll get 12x again. That's 24x and then 16 plus 6. So in this case, I get 9x squared plus 24x plus 22. Were the equations the same depending on which one I put in? No, they were actually very different. These two equations, they both had the 22. Kind of an interesting thing that happened there, but I wouldn't get too worried about it. The last uh, things we want to do is more of this composition, but we're going to use fractions. We're going to use a lot of different varieties. And so here, here's my function f, and here's my function g. I want to put g inside of f. So let's start with function f. 2 over something minus 1. Leaving parentheses where the something is, is really, where the x is, is really important. Now I'm going to put 3 over x in where the parentheses is. Now we've done these complex fractions before. Um, in case you don't remember, the goal was to multiply the top and bottom by the common denominator. Or to make the bottom have a common denominator. I'm just going to say the whole thing 
If I look, it's 1 over 1, 2 over 1. The common denominator would be x. So I want to multiply by x over x. If I multiply in to here, the top is going to become 2x over x times 3 is 3x. But then it cancels with the denominator, making it just 3. Minus x times the negative 1 is negative 1x. And this is my composition. But I do need to say that x cannot be 3. I can't use a 3 there um, because that would cause me to have an error in my domain. Last, we sometimes we want to go backwards. We look at something that looks really complex and we want to think, what's really going on inside? And so what I'm going to do is we're going to look at a couple of these equations and we're going to say, could we write it as two different functions? A lot of times a root kind of gives us the distinction right here. We have the cube root and then we have this thing inside. So what if we did f of x was x squared plus 1 and g of x was the cube root of x. If I put function f in, inside of function g, meaning that this x was replaced with the other equation, I should get h of x, this equation over here. So in order for me to write that, I start with that, and then I would say that this is equal to, so maybe h of x equals g of f of x. And when I'm putting function f inside of function g, where the x goes. Okay, so I'd replace this x with the other equation. And this is what we mean. That equation, as complicated as it looks, is actually just two functions built together. And, and it could even go further. I mean, there's, there's other ways to write these. Um, and here, let's just say that f of x is the square root of x, and that g of x is x squared plus 5. Okay, well, if I put g's equation inside of f, that would mean that h of x is f with g plugged inside of it. And so there's another example of this decomposition. We're saying, hey, that function is really two other functions doing something, um, one, one inside of the other. Well, hopefully that's enough to get you through, and we'll, we'll see you in class. Thanks.